Pharaoh, son of God. The ancient Egyptian Pharaoh was, in this life, revered as the name, that is, the heir, of the god Osiris. He was Horus, son of Osiris. When he died, he passed into the realm of the dead with the setting sun and became one with his father Osiris. He then traveled through the underworld, the Egyptian version of hell, to the foot of the mountain of God where he was judged. After being found guiltless, the Pharaoh, who was now Osiris, went up the mountain and ascended to heaven to assume the throne as king of the blessed dead. According to Egyptian mythology, the deceased pharaoh, who carried the name Horus in this life, always became Osiris and attained resurrection from the dead. He thus provided opportunity for resurrection to ordinary Egyptians, who likewise sought resurrection in and through him. They believe that any believer who successfully attained the resurrection did so by becoming one with Osiris, the ancient pharaoh who had died and been resurrected. In the burial ritual described in the last chapter, the Nile River represented the obstacle presented by the Sea of Reeds in the underworld. By transporting the deceased king's body across the Nile, the priests intended to ensure that his soul safely crossed the Sea of Reeds in the underworld. The boat that carried the body corresponded to that of the divine boatman whose services the deceased soul had to acquire when it reached the Sea of Reeds. The drawing above replicates one found on the tomb of a high Egyptian official at the beginning of the 19th dynasty, around 1300 B.C. The deceased is depicted as the god Osiris, lying on the boat and held upright in front of the funerary stella at the tomb. The scene depicts the actual burial ritual, but also symbolically represents events that must occur in the afterlife. The priest holding the mummy upright before the funerary stella, for example, is dressed as the dog or jackal god Anubis, who was the guardian of the tomb. Anubis protected the mummy against the evil forces of the night. The crossing of the Nile is the boat not shown in this drawing, but is depicted in other similar drawings. The mountain, shown rising out of the picture, to the right of the pyramid-like tomb, is intended to represent the cosmic mountain of God, from which the deceased will ascend into the resurrection. The two eyes over the tomb were meant to symbolically represent that the two eyes of Horus the sun and the moon had been restored after the eye of Horus, the moon, was lost in Horus's battle with Set, the enemy of his father Osiris. Only after the moon had been restored could the deceased enter into the resurrection. God used the loss of the moon, i.e. the three-day dark of the moon, to speak concerning the three-day interval between the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That Moses also knew of God's intention can be seen by his mention of Israel's need to make a three-day journey into the wilderness to sacrifice to God. Exodus 8, 27. In actual fact, the journey to Mount Sinai took the sons of Israel at least two months. Exodus 19, 1. The three-day journey between time of death and resurrection also lies behind Jesus' statements concerning the sign of Jonah, see Matthew 12, 39 and 16, 4. The connection between this belief and covenant sacrifice will be discussed in future publications. The magical rites performed at the base of the pyramid represented the corresponding rites that had to take place in the other realm after the deceased's soul crossed the Sea of Reeds. Only after Horus, that is, the recently deceased pharaoh who carried the name of his father Osiris, had defeated Set, the serpent or monster that lived in that sea, could he open the mouth of his father Osiris. Finally, the pyramid represented the primeval mountain of God from which the newly resurrected king ascended to take his place among the stars in the heavens as king of the blessed dead.